What's up guys? Welcome to Chasing Projects. I'm Jeff and this is your SoCal Fishing Forecast for Thursday, May 9th. Quick look at our 10-day weather pattern here. This is textbook May Gray June gloom weather here. Consistent temperatures, overcast mornings, burning off in the afternoon. Not a real big sign of wind here. <clears throat> Quick look at our wind chart here from windy.com. Got light westerly winds and a little bit of an eddy condition as well. And as we move through the week, pretty much everything is just about the same here. Friday's looking really nice, very light, light winds, great fish spotting weather. So keep this uh, weekend on your radar. If you're thinking about making a run to uh, a longer distance, you definitely got a chance here based on uh, what we're seeing. Things do start to pick up a little bit on Sunday into Monday, a little bit more weather westerly and a little bit more aggressive wind. But again, this is all, you know, 15 knots the most. So very, very fishable weather, <clears throat> very doable in a private boat, all things like that. So looking at any further than that, just things get un unreal unrealistic and unaccurate. Uh, or inaccurate. Current marine forecast, like I said, pretty much winds less than 10 knots all the way through Sunday, and then uh, from 30 to 60 miles off, start seeing wind waves two feet, then two to three feet at five seconds, and then three to four feet at five seconds on Sunday night. So that might be a little bit of a concern for you, <clears throat> but other than that, things are looking overall pretty good. Quick look at our three-day chlorophyll chart here. Nice green water on the outside. Green water lined up along the coast. What little bit of a red tie that was kind of hanging around it seems to have dissipated for now. So all in all, it's looking pretty good on the chlorophyll chart. Uh, again, usually springtime fishing, I really like hard edges. Um, this is a little bit of a hard edge, you know, between that nice blue water, things like that. But you really see the currents are just going to start spinning up these little eddies uh, along the coast. And that's really what, what we're going to be looking at here for the most part. Everyone gets nervous when they start seeing these clouds. But uh, the Coriolis effect is your friend when we have these uh, northwest winds that create coastal eddy condition. And this actually spins and drives up the California current bringing warm water to our bite. And as you can see, you know, 63, 64. And if you look at the one day, I mean, we're even, we got some warmer spots, 65, even all up to uh, Channel Island. So this water, it's doing its thing. Everything looks like a textbook spring condition for a normal year. I know we we're supposed to have a, a big El Nino this year, and then now we're going back to a La Nina. But as far as everything looks like right now, it looks like the yang and the yang of the El Nino La Nina is turning this into a very uh, normal, boring year. Nothing starting too early. Uh, like I said, for me, the real kickoff for Pelagic offshore season is really Memorial Day. And then uh, running to as late as Halloween, then anything after that, it's pretty much a, a blessing if it holds up. So we'll see what happens from there. But um, let's talk some fishing. Channel Islands has been blown out the last several days. A couple people have been able to sneak out, get on some of the sea bass bite here. Uh, there's some really nice units that have been schooling up. Uh, this is a casting fluke style white swim baits. Uh, you know, the five to seven inch white pearl color that looks like a squid works really, really well. Uh, matched with a, a heavier lead head so you can cast it a little bit further. And uh, just casting at schools that are on the surface. Um, that's the style of fishing that goes on at John's when it comes to sea bass for the most part. Uh, if you happen to find them parked in one place, then uh, you know maybe you go back to dropper loop style fishing with squid or maybe sliding sinker. But uh, for the majority, uh, finding schools on the surface and casting at them is the style of fishing that's going on at the John Islands. Moving down south, we've had, like I said, we've had a lot of wind here. So uh, no one's really been taking a look at Nick. 
pretty much been blown out. No one's really been looking at the uh, Outer Islands, the Channel Islands either with the wind. No one is really that I know of has been to Santa Barbara, but I have a, a suspicion there is a fair amount of sea bass still visiting this island <clears throat> like they did last year. And this would be the time. And there's been uh, some nice units picked up, but everyone's pretty tight-lipped about it. So uh, I can't confirm or deny, but if I was going to go looking, Santa Barbara Island would definitely be a stop for me, for sure. Moving to Catalina, uh, we've seen some sea bass, but there hasn't really been a lot of squid around the last couple weeks. So again, this drives my suspicion back to Santa Barbara Island. These things, they got to eat. They're hungry. They're not far from the lunchroom. So if there's not a lot of squid here at Catalina, there's a good chance that they moved on to Santa Barbara Island. So uh, frozen squid will work too, but you got to find them first. If not, uh, you can definitely target these fish uh, using mackerel, slow trolling mackerel. Um, will also work for uh, catching the yellowtail, uh, but usually a mackerel on a dropper loop is a good way to uh, try and entice the sea bass if there's no squid around. And uh, you might find a yellow here and there as well at the island, so you never know. Uh, San Clemente, we mentioned last week, it has awoken. There was a good yellow, yellowtail bite on the front side, per se in the Gold Bluff. Um, anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds. And uh, a couple more people have smoked or uh, snuck around and checked out the backside found a couple more at the dunes and there's been some spotted as well in the pyramid cove area so yellows are starting to show at the island finally uh if you can manage to rustle off the seals you got a chance uh at a yellow uh bites are coming on fly line baits uh, i'd start with like 25 or 30 pound or throw uh yo-yo jigs such as 6x junior um should get you going after those yellows pretty good. There's still been, uh, you know, these uh, home guard yellows at La Jolla have been popping up. Not really seen that much more. It's been more of an afternoon thing um, the last week or so, but they are around. And most of this is going to be, I'm going to go for a mackerel here as well. Um, no one's really going to have squid. You can definitely try it, but I think mackerel is your your best bet, especially for these coastal sea bass, where we don't get a lot of squid that likes to hang around. So there's been a pretty good mackerel population as of late. And um, I snuck out last week, and I saw a pretty good sign of it as well up here by Dana Point. So put the time in for the sea bass. That's, uh, that's how you catch them. There's no, uh, there's no easy ticket to, to, to catch them. They call them the silver ghost for a reason. Coming down to the Coronado Islands, we've seen a little bit of yellow tail. How about that? Um, not wide open. Uh, boats like the San Diego uh, have been catching a couple every day. Uh, they've had they've been having good opportunities, but the fish are not always biting, being a little bit stubborn. And they've seen them all the way down to the rock pile. So. Uh, if you're not seeing them around the islands bubbling up under birds, make sure you make at least a trip down to the rock pile uh, to check that box before before you head home. Bluefin. We talked about bluefin last week. We talked about kind of their migratory pattern. Let me switch up here to the uh, bottom detail just as a refresher for those that are not familiar. <clears throat> but um, earlier this month, we talked about seeing uh, these fish way down here before the lower 500. And I said, their first stop is gonna be this ridge right here. They always end up stopping here at the two, double 220s, 238. They like to hang out here and then they move to the, to the lower hidden. This is like textbook every single year, almost guaranteed. This is their, their next stop. So this week, uh, they actually the last couple of days they've seen here at the lower hidden bank and then uh, from there usually this is where when they start sliding up once they hit the 371 they kind of di diversify <laughs> some go left through San Salvador and all follow the ridge line some come up here follow the inner uh, channel 
up into the you know more coastal region and then the rest slide up to the 43. Sometimes you get a couple out here at the 60 if things are just really greened up and weird um, or no one's checking it but more or less using 371, 425 and then they kind of split in this two direction. And that's kind of how the spring goes and then obviously summertime they slide out to the tanner and uh, around St. Clay Island and as far as they want to go north. So, but yeah, as of late, uh, the lower hidden bank is where they were last seen. Uh, mainly been a night bite. Again, this is a uh, sport boat fishing. It's been the majority of the reports from this area. So these guys are dropping jigs on them in the dark. And that's their most successful program for targeting these fish. It's the easiest way for sport boats can catch them. So that's the way that they typically focus on them, right? They're not really flying the kite that much. They're not doing the private boat program. So if you're going to target these on a private boat, I would not be trying to drive around with your up and down, trying to find these things in the dark and drop jigs on them. Uh, you don't have a sonar in most private boats do, but if you do, that changes things. Um, so you got to focus your fish finding uh, with the tools that you have available to you. So for daytime fishing, a uh, private boat, I'd be looking at a kite or a uh, fly line or even a uh, sinker rig. And I'd probably start light. Although there was some fish, the fish that were caught last last night and the night before, uh, they had some like uh, in the high, high 100s, 180-ish, not quite 200. Um, although those were bigger fish, the majority of the fish caught before that were 40 to 60 pounds. So um, for daytime fishing, I would start with a, a 30 or a 40 pound uh, rig and uh, see if you can get bit first. You know, if you get bit off, uh, then slide up um, if you're on a, a bigger grade of fish here. But for the most part, uh, guys during the daytime, these things are going to be skittish, especially early season uh, daytime. So... They haven't quite settled in. Like I said, these are kind of fresh fish to this area and they get spooked easy and, you know, they're kind of still nervous and checking things out. So once these things get locked down on a, a big piece of structure for multiple days in a row, we're talking four or five plus, and they're not being run over by 300 boats, um, that's when you got a really good chance at, you know, putting the wood to them. But as of right now, this early season thing, they're going to they're gonna poke around, they're going to bounce around, they're going to be hard to stay on top of. Um, so if you're on a sport boat, you're focusing on nighttime, bring a variety of jigs, uh, bring anywhere from, you know, up to 400 grams. You're probably not going to get it with this type of wind that I'm seeing this week, but maybe 300 should be enough to get down. And then, uh, if you want to fish jigs during the daytime, switch to smaller profile, you know, something like the Daiwa SK, um, you know, 200 gram is fine if you're trying to get deep to those bigger fish. But, um, you know, these early season schoolie fish, uh, the things that I found to be you know, really easy to kind of give them a good flash. It sounds silly, but, you know, those old school Shimano butterfly jigs, they work just fine. If you stick to like a, a, a lighter weight, like an 80 or a, a 100 or maybe even a 125, they tend to flutter more before they sink. So you're giving uh, a better signal to the fish of what a bait is doing before it gets to that level. And sometimes uh, letting that jig float down to that level slower uh, will entice a bite. Or let's say the deckhand's throwing chum in the in the corner and the uh the downwind corner as long as you're out of people's way or whatever sometimes you can toss a jig in that same spot in that same corner let it get down to 100 100 150 feet those fish that are coming up to look at that bait are going to look at your jigs and sometimes you'll get a bite off that versus uh a fly line bait instead you're giving something a little bit different than than what everyone else is fishing um, so that's another little technique you can you can try too, especially for this early season stuff. Um, definitely had that technique work for me multiple times, and uh, I invite you to try it for the daytime. Obviously, nighttime things they, they tend to like that speed at night. They just don't really like that slow moving jig. So again, all these jigging techniques 
always work your line in a vertical fashion. Don't let it get too scoped out. And uh, generally, she has some pretty good luck. So still early in the season. If you're out there on the water, enjoy yourselves. And uh, yeah, hopefully got some more info next week. So stay tight. We'll see you next week, guys. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out our website and online store at chasingprojects.com. And make sure you share the stoke.